So we've we've come we've come back to the studio now. I don't know what happened with the phone, uh, but we got two calls in. So Jody, thank you for sorting that out. That's okay. And um, the the last the last room that we were in, what what did what did you make of that? Because you you haven't commented a lot so far on on the techniques that are being used. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I, I think uh, one of the first things I should say is um, that the people listening, they've got to come and see this exhibition <laughs> because you've got to see it for yourself. It is, uh, and, and go around once, and then go back to the beginning and look at a couple of items more closely and read, read what the, the sculptor says about them because uh, that's when you lift the lid on what's going on. It's, it's really exciting. Now, I, I mentioned earlier about um, some people were hadn't quite got to grips with the software so they extruded two dimensions rather like a cookie cutter going down quite a long way and um, maybe taking another pass on that but so that's that's as far as they got with with engagement and perhaps they thought well that was um, interesting enough in its own right and it is actually um, others um, I won't name names but it looked as if one uh, exhibit might have uh, borrowed um, an item off a gallery um, and then reproduced it a bit uh, so that there's a set of them and hey presto you've got a mashup and uh, that, that leads into a complete new topic of, of copyright and so on and so forth which we might talk about another time. Well yes yeah. I th I'm sure we'll come back to that. Sure um, and then uh, what, what I, I found really inspiring was the way that people are experimenting, they're playing with what 3D printing offers and what doors it opens are for for them to experiment with. And I think some of the items are uh, full-on experimentation and uh, other pieces in the exhibition, um, they are they really are fulfilling some, some of the scope that people have found and uh, sort of full marks to, uh, to, the, to the sculptors because it's really exciting, really exciting. Um, we, we had a look at uh, what Nick was describing earlier about um, the path of a glider going through air, and it makes sense when you see it. And it's actually quite quite uh, intriguing And once you start looking around and seeing what's going on and what's being represented. It's fun, it's really good fun. There's another piece that was a, um, uh, a I think it was called a polymorph, I can't quite remember. But basically, um, there was a rock. Within that rock, there was a shell, rather like the more shapely shells you might see on, this, on, on a beach. Um, and um, that shell within the rock had actually been dissolved, and it wasn't there anymore. But the rock was fully formed and mature and solid. And so in that rock, there was just an empty space, but it was the perfect impression of the remains of the shell. So they used some something rather like X-ray to uh, take a, uh, a three-dimensional scan or picture within the rock of that empty space and once they'd got the shape of that space they then presented that for the 3D printer to reproduce so they turned an empty space of air which had very strict boundaries on it like a, the outside shell and then they printed that shape and hey presto that's what he got in the exhibition and it's fascinating to know that that is the shape of an empty space inside a rock that you can't get at except through this technology. I, I find it fun, <laughs> good fun. Yeah, well, I, I quite agree. The, the, the show is well worth going back to, and it, it's there till the 19th of January. And um, I, I hope we'll be able to talk to some of the other artists and people around it and uh, do do more comments during the Wild Show over the, over the next few weeks. And so th th thanks very much for coming in today. And I, I hope maybe you could come back in January, or we could phone you, and um, see see what's been discovered in the meantime. I'd, I'd love that. Yeah, it's been great fun today, and uh, also it's, it's good to talk with you and Nick about the exhibition because, um, as you can imagine, if you just go around by yourself, uh, you live with your own thoughts about it. But once you're engaging with others, more and more comes out, and you, you get much more benefit from it. Yeah. Well, I, I think that'll continue. Um, th this is the, I'll just mention again this is the Wild Show on Phonic FM I'm sure Joe D's been mentioning this um, and we do have a Facebook page and so uh, I think we'll try and put some more, some more links in there and um, I, I, I think Joe, Joe D will, will, will be playing some more music to, to complete the, the next 10 minutes of the show 
So the, the, the last thing I'm going to say is just going back to something I heard from the storyteller, the, um, the drama show before this, this one. Um, just by chance, uh, he described a bit about the... I don't know the exact name of it. It's, it, it's some kind of um, fair or event here at the Phoenix on Saturday afternoon. And he will be telling stories and he will be wearing a very large mask but he'll also have rather small masks that can be given away as presents. Or, well, no, he'll be charging something for them, but they might make suitable presents. And I, it just occurred to me that um, that might be a model, because there's definitely authenticity there. There may be a bit of aura. There will be some storytelling, and there will be an object on various scales. Um, and I don't think he's used any 3D printing at all, but it just seemed worth, worth, worth mentioning there. So, uh, again, th thanks very much for coming in, and we'll have more on Neo Replicants and 3D printing in um, future shows. Well, thanks. Cheers. Sure. <laughs>